Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. King Khufu of Egypt Artifacts from the era of the great King Khufu, also known as the Pharaoh Cheops, have been discovered in a residential neighborhood in the Egyptian city of Cairo. Pharaoh Khufu is remembered as the one who commissioned the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza and is rumored to have been buried inside. He was the second pharaoh of the fourth dynasty and ruled during ancient Egypt's golden age, so any artifacts related to him are extremely exciting. These artifacts date back to the 26th century BC, about 4,500 years ago. This particular neighborhood was once part of the grand Egyptian city of Heliopolis, where the ancients worship sun deities. Even more amazing is that the archaeologists also discovered the ruined foundations of a sun temple. The artifacts recovered from the era of King Khufu are giant stone blocks made of granite, shaped into the form of sphinxes. The other finds come from a wide variety of different times, all the way from ancient Egypt to the Roman period, and even as recently as the Ottoman period. The Temple of the Sun dates back to the New Kingdom of the 16th century to the 11th century. With all this evidence put together, researchers can confidently say that for about 800 years, some of the most important Egyptian kings ruled from this city, which is now completely buried under modern Cairo. Then, for another 3,000 or so years, the city continued to flourish until it just kind of got swept underneath the modern world. Number 9. Egyptian Demons An Egyptologist based out of Belgium recently discovered what appears to be the oldest depiction of a demon anywhere in ancient Egypt. This depiction dates back 4,000 years and is proof that demonic entities have been plaguing the Egyptian consciousness for time immemorial. These demons were presented at the International Conference on Ancient Egyptian Demonology. That actually sounds like a fun conference, right? Whale Sherbini, a specialist in ancient religious texts, discovered two demons painted on a pair of Middle Kingdom coffins, and a third portrayed on an ancient leather roll that had been procured from somewhere unknown, then lost on a shelf in the Egyptian Museum for 70 years. The roll of leather is the oldest and longest Egyptian manuscript made of leather ever found, and it has a demon on it. The demons on the coffins are known as Intep and Cheri Benut. The first is pictured as a dog-baboon hybrid, while the second is some kind of strange, anthropomorphic figure with a human head. The demons were likely part of a whole horde of demons, designed to protect the burial chamber where the two coffins were found. Text within the ancient Egyptian building is linked to the moon god Thoth, so the demons could have something to do with him. Unfortunately, there were no accompanying texts or other elements that could explain what the demons were doing on the coffins. And as for the third demon that was found on the leather roll, it's called Ikenti. It was a guardian demon that protected a fiery gate and was depicted with the black head of a cat and the body of a large bird. Number 8. Strange Spots in Tutankhamun's Tomb Tutankhamun is without a doubt the most famous of all the great pharaohs who ever ruled ancient Egypt, even though he was only a boy when he became king. In fact, King Tut took the throne from his father Akhenaten when he died around the year 1334 BC, at the age of either 8 or 9. Most of his decisions, seeing as he was literally a child, were made by his advisors. It was his advisors who really wielded the power, with Tut little more than a figurehead. The boy king ruled for roughly 10 years and then died under mysterious circumstances. He was buried in the Valley of the Kings deep in the desert of Egypt and uncovered by the British Egyptologist Howard Carter in the year 1922. When Carter found the tomb, he was a little confused because it didn't seem quite as grand as he had been expecting. Sure, it was a fantastic tomb, but it was unusually small for such an important person. And more recently, something weird was found in the tomb. Black spotty marks have been identified all over the walls of King Tut's tomb, and they appear to be mold. Mold isn't found in any of the other tombs in the valley, and scientists initially thought it was because too many visitors were breathing inside the tomb. When looking at the photos from Carter's expedition, the black spots were already there. And now, according to expert Adam Lowe, the mold probably came because the tomb was sealed before the paint had a chance to dry. This is all very strange and suggests that King Tut's tomb was rushed. 
The painters who decorated the tomb had to abandon the project before the paint had even dried, meaning something major was going on and someone in charge wanted that tomb shut and sealed immediately. And now for number seven. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Jesse and Regina. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explained family. Number seven, Egyptian dinosaur. A team of Egyptian paleontologists have just discovered a dinosaur in the Egyptian desert that looks an awful lot like a T-Rex. According to Egypt's Mansoura University, the dinosaur bones were found in the Baharia Oasis, located deep in the western desert of Egypt. The fossil of this mysterious carnivorous beast was found in solid deposits of iron and sand. It actually took several years of detailed study to figure out what dinosaur the bone belonged to, and even what the bone was. It turned out to be the 10th cervical vertebra of a massive predatory dinosaur belonging to the family of dinosaurs, Abelisauridae. This dinosaur was originally named after the Argentinian scientist Roberto Abel, but the creature is distinguished by just how terrifying it is. These dinosaurs had sharp teeth that looked like broken knife blades, massive muscles in their hind feet to help them lurch forward and attack, and they looked like creepier, meaner versions of the T-Rex. Number six, newly discovered tombs. A series of entirely new tombs have recently been found in Egypt, and they are even older than the pyramids. These tombs are 5,000 years old, dating to the first intermediate eras of Egypt, to the oldest kingdom to rule the land even before the days of the mightiest pharaohs. In total, researchers found five ancient tombs hiding in the mysterious city of Saqqara. They date back to approximately 2700 BC. These things are so old that the Romans would have looked at them like we look at ruins from the Romans. Only the Romans for us were 2000 years ago, while these tombs were 3000 years old when the Roman Empire first took Egypt. Let that sink in for a minute. The tombs were excavated near the Great Pyramid of Merenre, which itself was built in the 6th dynasty. They were found at the bottom of deep burial shafts, in huge underground chambers decorated with colorful funerary scenes. Each tomb contained a limestone sarcophagus and was decorated with offering tables and typical funerary artifacts. Thanks to being able to easily decipher the ancient Egyptian writing, we know the names of most of the dead. There were government officials, both men and women, a priest, a grand priestess, and an overseer. Amazingly, we can still see their names written on the walls, like Henu and Pepi, helping to bring these ancient people lost in the past back to life, which was the whole purpose of their tombs in the first place. Number 5. Egyptian Notepads An absolutely monumental discovery has been made in the lost city of Athribis, located in central Egypt. Researchers have discovered the biggest collection of notepads from the ancient world since archaeology really took off at the beginning of the 20th century. In total, researchers have catalogued upwards of 18,000 ancient Egyptian notepads. Of course, these aren't notepads like you would buy now. They weren't made of paper, but pieces of pottery used by students. These scraps of pottery are known as ostraca, and they were way cheaper and far more accessible than papyrus. And so, students at school would use these pieces of pottery to write down things just like you probably did in school. Math problems, alphabet exercises, lists of numbers and dates, and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty amazing to see that even thousands of years ago, students were busy solving math problems and practicing their alphabet. We have a lot more in common with ancient Egyptians than we probably thought. One of the more unusual things found was a Bart Simpson-type punishment. A bad child appears to have been disciplined by being forced to write the same thing over and over again on scraps of pottery. Number 4. Ancient Recipe Archaeologists have done something a little out of the ordinary. They use an actual recipe from the days of ancient Egypt to make their very own olive oil. The use of olive oil goes back thousands and thousands of years. The Romans used it, the Greeks, and the Phoenicians. In truth, making olive oil is really easy. Emlyn Dodd, an archaeologist at the British School at Rome, wanted to use the torsion method to make olive oil, which was created by the Egyptians about 4,600 years ago. First, olives are crushed and put inside a permeable bag. 
Sticks are then shoved into either end of the bag and twisted in opposite directions. This compresses the bag and filters out the liquid. It's wildly simple and was used first by the Egyptians and remained in use all the way until the 20th century in Italy. The earliest example of the torsion method for extracting olive oil was found in the tomb of Nebe Maket from the year 2600 BC. Number 3. King Tut's Grandfather Archaeologists unearthed the crumbling remains of two giant sphinxes at a mysterious temple in the city of Luxor. His statues are positively immense, each one about 26 feet in length. They were discovered partly submerged in water at an old and abandoned shrine to Amenhotep III. If you're not sure who that is, he was the grandfather of King Tut. The artifacts were discovered by German and Egyptian researchers while they were busy restoring the ancient funerary temple. This place is called the Temple of Millions of Years, although it's already in pretty bad shape after just over 3,000 years. They also came across a trio of black granite busts of the ancient Egyptian goddess of war Sekhmet. She took the form of a fierce lioness and was the most favored and beloved god of soldiers and generals. The lead archaeologist on the project, Haurig Sarusian, said the artifacts were discovered near an old ceremonial road that was used for celebrations during King Tut's grandfather's ruling years. The celebration started when Amenhotep reached his 30th year as the king of all Egypt, and then continued every three years just to celebrate the fact that he was still alive. Amenhotep III managed to live all the way to 40, which was practically unheard of for pharaohs of the day. And during those last 10 years, the celebrations that happened here were the biggest parties you could find in Egypt, with feasting, sacrifice, and offerings being made to the great gods. Number 2. The Dazzling Aten The biggest discovery in modern Egyptology was that of a lost city, found just two years ago in 2020 during the Panini. Some have hailed it as the biggest discovery since Tutankhamun, while some say it's even bigger. It's an entire city, not just a couple of buildings a whole lost metropolis that was literally buried under the Egyptian sand and had to be dug out. The city goes by many different names but is primarily known as either the Dazzling Aten, the Rise of Aten, or just Aten. It was found on the western bank of the Nile, hidden near the Theban necropolis not far from Luxor. The city was named after the sun god Aten and was abandoned for unknown reasons. Because it was deserted so abruptly and nobody ever went back to living in it, this city just kind of faded into obscurity. This great shining city was actually standing during the reign of the pharaoh I just told you about, Amenhotep III. The earliest inscription found within the ruins is 1337 BC, but it could be even older than that. This city was built 3,400 years ago, when Egypt was at its wealthiest. After the death of Amenhotep III, this city was abandoned abruptly and for no apparent reason. The capital of ancient Egypt was moved to Amarna, 250 miles to the north. Number 1. Dinosaur Footprints In Egypt's eastern desert, massive dinosaur footprints have been found embedded in the ground. This discovery is brand new and the first of its kind in Egypt. The footprints, which belong to both carnivores and herbivores, date back over 70 million years. We already know there was a huge population of predatory dinosaurs in the western desert. Now, thanks to researchers from the Vertebrate Paleontology Center at New Valley University and Cairo University, we know there were also giant dinosaurs in the eastern desert. The only issue is that we don't know exactly which dinosaurs or what the landscape really looked like here. If it was anything like the desert to the west, this was probably a place rich in biodiversity a hot jungle instead of a dry and barren desert. Researchers found 16 individual dinosaur footprints stamped into Nubian sandstone. They have estimated the size of the dinosaurs to be anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 pounds, so they probably stood upwards of 16 feet tall. They also identified carnivore tracks, animals that walked on two legs, and four-legged herbivore tracks. These dinosaurs must have lived in the desert in the last few million years of the age of dinosaurs before the asteroid came from the heavens and wiped them all out. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time for another video on ancient history. Bye.